at Venus Flytrap, Marissa McBride. Help. She's trying to help me with my computer. It's not working. The prompter's not working. Mercury's in retrograde. There are ghosts. Okay, fine. I'll let you go. Everybody. Show starts now. Oh, no. Somebody hit the button. The show starts now. I got the energy. Touchdown! Got the energy. Put it up. Let that receiver do his thing. Got the energy. I know you're feeling my drive. I got the energy. Energy. I got it. Energy. Energy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a good one for you today. I don't... Oh, oh. Some things are happening here in studio. You know what happens? It's uh, more ways to win comes in here, and they muck with everything. And that's what I. That's who I'm deciding to blame. James Jones. <laughs> James Jones was just in studio. He finally came and said hi to me. He's been here. I've been here 15 weeks. He's roaming the halls, and I think he probably tripped on some wires. Yeah. Or he uh, he looked at the wires funny. Something happened there. Marissa McBride came over to help me. Uh, Marissa McBride's had quite a week. We've had so many fun interviews, and that means a lot of work for her. And we've got a great show ahead. We've got, what a game tonight. Oh, my goodness. AFC East battle between the Patriots and the Bills. Eric Weddle will be on our show. And Naeem Hines playing in tonight's game. We sat down and talked. He's been learning the playbook. He wants a bigger role. We talk about, I mean, he swore. I've, I never in my life thought Naeem Hines would swear, and he does it right here on Up and Adams. Let's get to it. You can tweet the show, uh, and we're looking at that Week 13 slate. It looks amazing. By the way, Matt uh, Hamilton will be joining us to break down things as only he can. Digestible, aperitif, good meal, a little dessert, and we'll get rolling here on a Thursday. All right, that's what it is. All right, so let's do this. Uh, we got some heavyweight matchups. Buffalo, let's move on to this. They have righted the ship after hitting... Um, I don't want to say like a slowdown, but they hit a bit of a moment of some struggles in the middle of the season. But none of that matters if they can take control and do it tonight and get it going here. Uh, even though they're winning, I, the one thing that worries me a little bit is that Josh Allen still doesn't really look right. Now, over the first six weeks, Allen was on fire, uh, leading the league in passing yards and touchdowns. And over the last six weeks, he's throwing for nearly 100 fewer yards per game. His passer rating has dropped by almost 34 points, so he needs to get going again if the Bills want to reach their goal. And their goal is the one set for themselves, set by every pundit that exists, set all preseason, all offseason, and that's a Super Bowl championship win, not even appearance. It's a disappointment for the squad if they don't go and win handedly. And now they're playing without their star offseason acquisition in Von Miller and left tackle Deion Dawkins, and they're showing a bit of vulnerability. Uh, I think, actually I know, because I've done this a year or two, beating New England tonight, bright lights, Thursday night football, meaningful games, playoff pictures being painted, I do think that would go a long way in perception in settling people down. That being said, I do think this is unequivocally a bigger game for New England, specifically for Mac Jones. Now, I've sung his praises all week. He had that 382-yard performance, albeit in a loss against the Vikings. But this this is um, a totally different animal tonight under the bright lights of Thursday Night Football on Prime Video with our guy Andrew Whitworth doing his thing. Um, and it's not only because they're playing against the Super Bowl favorite and the reigning division champs, of course, but because this is the team that Mac has struggled against more than any season. And these, these kind of full screens can follow your, your career. You know, this is his second year. You keep adding losses. You keep adding these sort of numbers. You know, and he did get a win, by the way. It was a weird win last year, and there was that crazy storm up in Buffalo, remember, guys? Uh, and he, he only completed two, two passes, and they won that game. So stupid. But he did lose the next two, including the 47 to 17. That one sticks out. That's a sore eye there. Uh, it was a blow off in the bl a blowout in the playoffs, um, and the numbers to that weren't pretty. Those kind of full screens can follow you in your career. It's like the Bears up against Aaron Rodgers. It's there, we have a lot of splits like that, and there are like Kirk Cousins and Primetime. You don't want to give those, you don't want to feed the gremlin that is the full screen depicting the negative split for your career. And I don't think, to add on to this for this matchup, 
I'm not convinced, and I work on a show in New England Quicksilence with Tom Curran every week, and I'm plugged in with that fan base quite a bit. I don't believe, and I'm not convinced, that Pat's nation is over the zappening. You know, I think he lost a segment of that fan base, I'm talking about Mac Jones here, with those early season issues, and then Zappy comes in, then there was this Jeff Howe article, I don't know if anybody saw on The Athletic yesterday, talking about the potential for Tom Brady to return to New England this offseason. So this is a whole scenario that would make Mac Jones uh, obviously worry about this, and he sh might get shipped off somewhere else if that scenario were to play off, though, though it's a complete hypothetical at this point. Uh, I say all of that to say that the pressure is mounting, and I think Mac has a chance to win back, reel them on in like a lobster or something. What's that? What else? What swims out there in New England? I don't know. I'm completely great. Lobster, they're saying in my ear. Get some lobster. Huh? Uh, get some of those New England Patriot fans back to cement you in their eyes, which is important, as the Patriots quarterback of the future. Tonight, tonight, tonight. This is a game that could completely change the narrative on Mac Jones. One drive. One throw, one moment can impact his entire perception around the league, and I mean that. And I think we're going to see Mac Jones embrace the challenge and give them all he can give them. So for more on Mac Jones, Matt Hamilton, I know I've been singing his praises all week. We've got another edition of... <laughs> the singing, the dancing, the reeling of lobsters, the computer issues, we've had it all. Hey, and I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a marking girl. Get off me! Get off. <laughs> Hammer, love to see you. Love to see you. I know you've been doing a lot of work this week. And this match was great. I've talked a lot about how Mac Jones has looked good over the past few weeks. Does that even matter? And what are you seeing on tape and how do we apply it for this game hours from now? I think it absolutely matters, and I think we're seeing some growth in Mac Jones that's significant. You have been talking him up all week, and, it, and it's deserved, even in that loss to Minnesota. But you're right, the stakes are even higher tonight. And you'll see here, I want to show a few examples of how he's grown. Okay. They're going to run play action here. Hunter Henry up the seam, Nelson Aguilar running that curl. And watch, on the play fake, the linebackers are creeping up. And Mac Jones is going to be able, uh, Hunter Henry's releasing behind them on that seam. Watch how quickly Mac Jones gets his head around here. He plants that foot in the ground. He gets his eyes to Henry. He sees that those linebackers have creeped up. And look at how quickly he gets this ball out of his hand. It's accurate. It's on time. He gets it to Henry before that safety can make a break on the ball, which mm. allows Hunter to turn around, make him miss, get upfield, and eventually work his way into the end zone. And that quick processing is something that stood out with him at Alabama, but we haven't seen it as consistently this year. I feel like his, even his confidence was shaken a bit at times, but it's back now, and he's taken it a step further. Here, a little post-dig combo at the bottom of the screen. Devontae Parker running a go, one-on-one -on -one up top. The Vikings are in cover two at the bottom. They're running quarters up top, but I want you to pay attention to Harrison Smith here because we know he's an all-pro safety. He's very smart. He knows Mac Jones loves getting the ball out quick, processing quickly, getting the ball out of his hands, and look, Jones' eyes come to the right. Look at what Harrison Smith is doing. He is cheating on that post-dig combo. He's breaking on it. And that leaves no one over the top to Devontae Parker. Mac Jones gets through his progressions, gets to Devontae, mm. and he's going to get this ball out. Now Harrison Smith's in no man's land. There's no one to make a play on that ball over the top. And it's an absolutely beautiful throw. So we're seeing Mac Jones now. It's not just efficient football. It's not just getting the ball out quickly and allowing guys to make plays. He's picking his spots to take shots down the field, too. And I think that's something he's really struggled with in the past. And it's an evolution to his game that's making him a much more dangerous quarterback. And he's a winner. That matters. He's winning. That You're talking about the confidence. That matters. As we've seen, look at what we're all, what are we talking about all week with Tua and McDaniel. And now it's all confidence. Mac Jones, when you win three of the last four, when your passer rating the last two games ranks in the top three in the NFL, that adds confidence. I ask you, what's the biggest challenge tonight against Buffalo for him? Absolutely, you're right. You're seeing that confidence build, and it all does come from winning. But uh, this Buffalo defense, they're down Von Miller, as you mentioned. They still have some waves of pass rushes, and I think that's where Mac has to be able to stay comfortable in the pocket. He's going to have to hang in there, probably take a few shots. The offensive line for the Patriots has been a little banged up, uh, and it's forced him off his spot a few times. It's forced him to have to deal with some pressure. So he has to keep that confidence even in the face of pressure tonight. Davis White, anyone? Uh, Brian? 
What does he want to? He should get more snaps than me. He should get more. Okay, Tredavious what? Sure. Trying to get. I read something this morning yeah, about they're trying to restructure his contract. Apparently, did you see this? Something's going on. He might. Interesting. Brian says yeah. he might need more money. <laughs> he is one of the best corners there is, but uh, I'm also looking tonight. There's a little. Uh, there's a little parlay action going on tonight, and uh, I'm looking at Mac in this Patriots offense. Uh, Mac Jones over the 225 passing yards. Ramondre Stevenson with Damian Harris being out tonight as a t as an anytime touchdown scorer, and Hunter Henry going over 25 receiving yards. Okay, so we like that one. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, so Bills at Patriots, same game parlay in Mac Jones, 225 plus. Got it. And we like that. And tell me, so, really me this quickly before we go to break. We have a big show. Eric Weddle on the show. Naeem Hines on the show. He's playing this. Man, when you see this interview, I'm telling you, you're just going to, it's, it'll be impossible, unless you're a Patriots fan, to not root for Naeem Hines to, like, have some sort of touch. And I remember, you reminded me of this earlier this week. Naeem Hines had an, the opening score uh, as a Colt, of course, against Bill Belichick and company. And he's got, like, he goes way back with Josh Allen. We've got lots to talk about quickly with the parlay stuff. I'm mm -hmm. I might dip my foot into the parlay pool and pond a little bit later this weekend. But isn't there something cool tonight about what, what goes on? Like, FanDuel does something cool for Thursday nights, right? People yeah, are, so like, for texting Thursday me. People are like, oh, I, 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 I bet on Thursdays because I, something cool happens with money back or something. Don't put words in my mouth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so for Thursday night, uh, if, you put, if you go in on a parlay and it doesn't hit, you get your money. You get that money back in in free bets. It's the no sweat parlay. You get your so it's it's a good if you're new. It's probably a good chance to go in there because it's low. Is it low? Would you say it's low risk ish? Yeah. Yeah, because they're gonna they're, they'll give you uh, they'll give you those everything back in free bets if it doesn't hit. So really, it's a it's a good it's a good time to take a chance and, and throw some things out there. A no sweat, same game parlay. First I'm hearing of it, but appreciate it. But people are texting me that, that that's the day that they decide to do it. Uh, I'll say hammer, it says no sweat there, but I always work up a sweat when I do. Hammer time. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Go reel in some lobsters. <laughs> You're giving me 10 seconds of dancing till break. Go to break, I'm not dancing for 10 seconds. Yeah. Coming up, my conversation with Bills, running back, we just talked about him, and Muscular Distribute Association spokesperson, Naeem Hines. How can you possibly enjoy returning punts? I, honestly, I mean, punts are better than kickoffs. I mean, at least in punts, you can fair catch it. But it takes a special skill to be able to read the ball and be able to look up and down and, you know, catch a ball while there's 10 or 11 other guys trying to kill you. So, uh, so what do you tell yourself when you're back there the second before it happens? <laughs> uh, honestly, excuse my language when I say this. It. Like, <laughs> that's that's exactly what I say. And I mean, not on a bad way and not a reckless way, but you kind of have to just be like, screw it. What do you like, mean, not a reckless way? Hey, everyone. This Giving Tuesday, I encourage you to join me in supporting the Muscular Dystrophy Association. MDA funds life saving research and care for people living with muscular dystrophy. ALS, and related neuromuscular diseases. Donate today at mda.org. That was one of the most passionate players in the NFL. He uh, switched after being with the Indianapolis Colts for four, four and a half years, goes and gets traded to Buffalo midseason. Now he's in prime position to help that team win a Super Bowl ring, but he's passionate about everything wherever he goes, whether it's on the field or returning punts or it's helping Muscular Dystrophy Association, as you just saw, as he serves as their spokesperson for this year. He helped on Giving Tuesday. He's helping all season, and it's got special meaning to him. And to tell us more about that is my sit-down with Naeem Hines. Naeem Hines. Spokesperson for MDA. You're wearing a t-shirt. We see all the social media coverage, raising money, doing the right thing, and we can't wait to get into it. Uh, but first, almost five seasons in one place, middle of the country, Indianapolis, those Colts. Talk me through landing in Buffalo and joining the Bills. Uh, I think it uh, really just starts from that Tuesday, that Tuesday at 3.55 when... Naeem Hines is going to the Buffalo Bills. Wow. Uh, wow. With a Jeez. shot clock expiring trade on the books wow. made official. I get the call from Chris Ballard and they're telling me, you know, I'm, I'm being sent to Buffalo. And then, you know, at four o'clock, the Bills are calling me and 
And their next question is, you know, they tell me they're they're happy to have me, excited. You know, they tried to get me the past couple of years. And then next question was, uh, can you get on this seven o'clock flight? So uh, I was in Buffalo at 12 a.m. the next morning. So what are the feelings you're feeling about leaving Indy and then being in this new spot? <laughs> Uh, you know, there were some tears shed when I went in there and I turned my iPad. It was, you know, I've built a lot of relationships with uh, my coaches, a lot of guys, equipment guys over the past five years. And, you know, it's a hard place. It was like home. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, to take some steps forward in life, you got to take some steps back. So uh, it was really hard to leave. But ever since I've been to Buffalo, I've been super happy, even though the weather hasn't been that bad. So uh, it was bad, <laughs> but honestly, when you're somewhere, when you go somewhere where you feel like you're wanted and loved, and uh, it just makes it easier. I mean, you were there for about... <laughs> three minutes dude and then all of a sudden you are the, the air guitar the karaoke this the karaoke <laughs> amazing what was that like i mean it, it was just great i told they they tried to pull me on there and uh, honestly, I just said, uh, play a song I like. And I was actually uh, in the equipment room, in the back of the equipment room, I'm packing my stuff from Indy. And then I heard, I write Sins Not Tragedies come on. And I had to run in there and, you know, get my two cents. <laughs> I was going to say, it didn't really look like they were trying to get you to do it. It looked like you were like, oh, let me do that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they tried to get me like 10 or 15 minutes ago. And I guess the right song wasn't playing. Then I heard one of my favorite rock band songs came on. And I guess I just, became, I just had to go out there and rock out. What's the energy like? Give me, you know, lots of expectations on this Bill squad. They look like they're having fun, but the pressure is thick. What's it really like in there? Like you said, uh, we're having fun, uh, but we know the pressure that comes with this. Uh, you know, they're trying to be Super Bowl contenders. They're trying to get over the hump, get past the AFC Championship game. And the only way you can really get through all that pressure is just kind of keep a little bit loose. Lab, joke, and honestly, all that looseness makes you become closer as a team. Who's like the class clown that you've already noticed through four weeks? <laughs> <laughs> like everybody, really? uh, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and probably Isaiah McKenzie. All those guys are funny, and uh, everybody else is funny too. But I think those are like the leaders of making everybody laugh. What do you want fans to know, and even you know pundits, people who have shows like me, about how challenging it is to go from a place, the only place you know, to a new place mid-season and trying to learn a playbook. Um, I think what I want people to know is uh, with this process, everything in life that we want, we normally want it in instant gratification. But unfortunately, in life and in football, it's not like that. So uh, really, you just got to start from scratch, start from zero, and uh, try to learn and get in where you fit in and just have some great helping hands along the way. I cannot wait to see the Naeem Hines breakout game. Like, if I know that you <laughs> win, just a few touches on offense so far. What is the plan, and when is that game coming? Uh, I don't I don't really know the plan. I know that uh, they're trying to get me going, and I want to come here and have 10, 15, 20 touches of offense, but it doesn't work like that. I have to know what I'm doing. I have to earn the, those guys' trust, and that's really where I'm at. I've had to play special teams and do some things I've never done before, but uh, that's what it takes sometimes to get to where you want to be and what it takes to be great. Hines, it's a foot race, and they're not going to get him. Here's a quote you had. Before I go back there, I say, I don't care about my life. And my question to you is, how can you possibly enjoy returning putts? I, honestly, I mean, punts are better than kickoffs. I mean, at least a punch, you can fair catch it. I mean, but uh, honestly, it's just, it's a skill. Like I tell a lot of people, uh, either you can do it or you can't do it. It takes a special skill to be able to read the ball and be able to look up and down and, you know, catch a ball while there's 10 or 11 other guys trying to kill you. So uh, really, I think it's just the type of player I am. It's just like how I run across the middle and catch slants. You just kind of have to be fearless back there, trust your teammates and trust your technique. So what do you tell yourself when you're back there the second before it happens? <laughs> uh, honestly, excuse my language, what I say is it. Like, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I say. And I mean, not on a bad way and not a reckless way, but you kind of have to just be like, screw it. What do you like, mean not a reckless way? <laughs> because, I mean, you can't just go back there and just be like, oh, what happens if the kick's short? Oh, what happens if somebody's in my face? You kind of can't think about that. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what type of kick is going to be, and you don't know who's going to be there when you catch it. So you really just have to go out there and really be as fearless as possible and be ready for anything to happen. You have a big game against the New England Patriots. But what do you think? It's Josh Allen. I mean, <laughs> well, you get to practice with him every day. You get to see what makes him really great. And uh, Josh is very, very smart. I, I mean, I don't think people really talk about how smart of a guy he is. They just talk about how incredible of an athlete he is, how great his right arm is, which are also very, very great. But uh, he has an answer. And when those answers to the test aren't there, he can pick it up with his legs. How do you sort of break 
down that wall when he has chemistry with these guys year in, year out? To start with, I'm on Josh's good side. I remember we were at the rookie premiere together uh, the first time I met him. And I remember he was just over there and they had him, we were all dancing in front of the camera. So each guy had their own dance. And for whatever reason, they played Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. And you know, most guys aren't gonna know what to do with that. So I remember him not knowing what to do. And I came over there immediately to start dancing with them. We had videos of it. So uh, that's a great icebreaker. Outside of that, you can just kind of go with him, joke to him. We talk about Call of Duty Warzone and stuff like that. So it's really easy to talk to Josh. So this game against New England, I got sidetracked. You're going to have a little extra motivation out there because you'll be wearing custom cleats for my cause, my cleats, and you're repping Muscular Dystrophy Association. You are the spokesperson, and you have been raising awareness all over social media and through charity events, raising money. How did you first get involved? A long time ago, my grandmother passed away with it uh, in 2004. My mom and uncle currently have it. And uh, ever since about college, I've had a platform, so I've been just trying to raise awareness for something that's very, very rare. And uh, the, mu the Muscular Dystrophy Association has done a great job of helping me raise awareness. They cover a lot of things that people don't even realize, like ALS is a form of muscular dystrophy. So if you actually look into muscular dystrophy of this rare genetic disease, there's a lot of people who might be affected and they just don't know it. it's that type of muscular dystrophy. And your mom, you were only 14 when she was diagnosed. And she, as I understand it, tell me if I'm wrong, she spent a lot of time in the hospital in the past couple of years. And you've sort of grown up watching her battle. How has her strength affected you? Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, my mom, in 2021 and 2020, she was in the hospital over 100 days. Uh, the past two years, I watched my mom. She's lived by herself. She's fallen and broken both of her hips at two separate times. So uh, it's been definitely tough, but I think the easiest thing for me to just remind myself is how watching my mom wake up every day, she has to struggle to brush her teeth. Uh, I have to help her with her hair sometimes. And it puts things in perspective that life is not as bad as you ever think it is. It can always be worse. And you know, there's obviously I play a sport that's very, very physical. So there's days where, or times even in a game where I'm like, God, Naheem, your legs are tired. Like, mm -hmm. what can you do? And I think about my mom. My mom's legs are tired every day when she wakes up. Like, she just doesn't have it like she used to. I used to race my mom, and now she can't hardly walk. I think the biggest thing with all this is just hearing my mom and my uncle's stories of everybody telling them they can't do something. And, you know, just thinking about me as a 5'9", 195 running back, and people telling me things that I can't do and still can't do, and I'll probably try to prove, <laughs> try to prove that I'm wrong the rest of my career. But I think just seeing a lot of my loved ones struggle like that has been really hard, but it's been made me a stronger man. It has, and now you're going to be wearing those cleats on Thursday, and you're helping raise money. And the money is so important, I think, especially and particularly with Muscular Dystrophy Association, which you know I work closely with as well and strongly support. And it's a really easy cause to support because there is progress, and they are close, and there's hope. And the fact that there's hope is such a powerful and beautiful thing. And so the money matters, the time matters, the awareness matters. Like I've learned in life, like hope is a very, very positive and contagious thing. And even as athletes, when you have hope, you can do a lot of things that you can't, that you can never imagine. How can people help? Uh, well, the first thing to do to help is you can just go to mda.org forward slash donate. And that's just for donating. But after that, you can just go on mda.org and look up and just really brush up on your research on it. Because I feel like if you just Google what muscular dystrophy is, you will learn a lot about it. And there's probably somebody within your family or friends that is affected by it. There's over 40 types. So if you can just brush up and really just raise awareness of it and just figure out what it is, you can help out and change a lot of lives. And there's probably somebody who is close, closely affected to you. You excited to wear those cleats? Oh, I'm super excited. They're blue. Uh, they got a little bit of gold in it. I haven't seen it. My guy Rodney Jackson's done well. I'm super excited to wear it. We're wearing all white. I'll have the blue on. So uh, so this week I'll have a little bit extra motivation. I can look down and see the people who motivate me every day to play well. So I'm super excited. And you know, it's a Thursday night game. So I'm excited for prime time. It's prime time. It's MDA on those cleats. Your family's name's on them. It's so such a beautiful thing uh, and a powerful thing. And I'm just, I really hope that you score that touchdown. I need that. I, <laughs> now that we have this chat, I just feel like it all kind of makes sense that you get in the end zone and then everything can just sort of come full circle. What do you think? Like we talked about, hope is a great thing, and I'm hopeful that that is, that is a real thing, and I think it'll be a great day for us. MDA.org is where to go. Bills fans, NFL fans, to help support this incredible cause. Good luck against Belichick on Thursday. Thank you, and thank, thank you for having me on. I hope to talk to you again soon.
You can help transform lives. Go to MDA.org. He talked a lot about hope. And, of course, you can't help. You can't say that you're going to uh, score a touchdown in a game against any opponent. But you can certainly do what you can to help a cause that has, like we talked about, so much hope and so much momentum behind it to help find a cure and improve uh, lives for families that live with neuromuscular diseases. Uh, MDA.org is where to go to donate. Now, Naeem Hines is playing tonight. I thought to myself, man, if he scores a touchdown, and you know, he's just learning the playbook. He just got there a second ago. You, could, you see that shot that he's doing this? He's, by the way, this is not a running. This is not a running back who you know is a top five running back in the National Football League. He gets moved now. He's an opportunity to win a championship, which is incredible. But a guy who gets uprooted from the only NFL team he's ever known goes to a team and immediately starts learning a complex playbook on a team that has all the more, most pressure of any team in the National Football League, and he still makes time to be a spokesperson. He still makes time to sit down and have a, a half-hour chat with me about what's really important to him, uh, which is, of course, his family and this cause. So I thought to myself, man, like, if he scores a touchdown, somehow crazy. Like, on a return, like, I'll donate $1,000. That's fine. But uh, if, if the Bills win tonight, I will donate $1,000 to this right here, Muscular Dystrophy Association. This is some easy thing. I don't know how you guys make these. You just make them somehow the wizards that I have uh, backstage created this thing you just click on it or go to MDA.org it's probably the easiest way um, if you're you know technologically unsavvy like I am but uh, you can go there and learn like uh, like Naeem was saying uh, about neuromuscular diseases how you can help and you can also donate to make a big difference so thank you to the Bills and Naeem Hines I'm rooting for you tonight we'll be back with Eric Weddle after this FanDuel Casino has a special offer for new players 21 or older. With FanDuel Casino's Play It Again, you can play your favorite casino games and get up to $1,000 back. If you don't win, that means you can play Blackjack, Wheel of Fortune, Live Dealer Roulette, and more. And if you don't win, you'll get up to $1,000 back to play it again. Download FanDuel Casino today. Turn it up, hey, we'll fight at a time. It's never been up. I ain't done with it, shine. I'm out of my zone. I'm out of control. I'm out of control. I'm whipping the sauce. I'm out of the car. Uh, Super Bowl champion uh, in our midst. He's here, and I know he's enjoying that music and those highlights, and he is with us right now. Rams, Ravens, Chargers, Superstar dominates the carpool lane as well. Loyal teammate and best friend to everyone that we know and love on the show. Eric Weddle, how are you? Gosh, my entrance just keeps getting better and better with you, Kay. <laughs> what, what do I, uh, how do I re repay the favor? Listen, Kay is the best, uh, unbelievable. No, what? you got to give me the goods. You just got to give me those sound bites, baby. It'll make yeah, them, make them uh, go across I'll, the internet. <laughs> I try my best. I try my best. Uh, love having you. Listen, we're just we're just trying to get better every day here on the Up and Out Hey, we're show. just trying to be great. Uh, I see you. You know who's great? Your Utes. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah, I mean, you are know, you kidding? They're taking on USC. Pac-12 championship tomorrow. Are you going to Vegas? And how does Utah pull off the upset over USC? Of course. Of course I'm going. Uh, flying out late tonight. Chanel and I are flying out. Get a little uh, day and a half uh, mini vacation away from our crazy rugrats. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be an amazing environment. The place is going to be packed. I'm sure that we'll have more fans than they will because we travel. Uh we travel well for university, and I don't know. I like the matchup. It's very similar to last year. We beat Smash Oregon at the end of the year. Then okay. we had to play them again, and we're the only team to beat SC this year, even though it was a crazy back and forth at our place. I understand all that stuff, but we match up well with them, and, you know, come down to the fourth quarter, who's going to make those big plays? And Cam did it last time, uh, had the ball last. I think you going is a big advantage. That's what I think. <laughs> I don't know. Because every all yeah. the footage I see of you, you're standing on the sideline, <laughs> you're in the end zone, you're rooting everybody on. Yeah, you're you know like you're you were honored this year. I think it all matters. So Reggie Bush, you keep doing your what is he doing? Wendy's commercials. What is we, yeah? What, Reggie Bush, don't don't come, don't show up at this game. We have one superstar on one side, and it gives the youth the advantage. That's my analysis for this one, but that's not what I'm here to do. That's your job. So let's get this going here with the Ravens. Okay, they. I hate talking about uh, negative stuff. They squander uh, a nine-point fourth-quarter lead to the Jags. Now, here's the thing, and I did some simple addition here. Baltimore has blown four fourth-quarter leads in all of their losses. Every loss is a fourth-quarter blown lead. What exactly is keeping them from putting teams away? 
Well, the early in the season, it was it was you know miscommunication, big plays. Uh, you could even say the offense had a hand in them not not maybe getting a couple more first downs or maybe scoring in the red zone. This past week, I mean, sometimes a quarterback just gets hot. And mm. when you go 15 to 17 for 170 and two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, you, you tip your hat. It, it's not like uh, we were blowing coverages or missed tackles. Like, they were just making plays. Marvin Jones in the, in the corner of the end zone makes an unbelievable catch. And then, you know, the two-point conversion, I would have liked to see better leverage on that play, you know, with the defense that they were running. But, listen, that's, that's football. And mm. to say that th there's something wrong, no, I mean, that's – those guys get paid. And uh, you, you tip your hat and you, and you chalk it up and you just hope that you learn from it. It's a reoccurring theme is, is a little bit concerning right. that we're not putting these games away, but – Listen, this is the NFL, and at any moment, any team can be any team if you don't play your best football in the critical moments, which is two minutes, two minute situations in the fourth quarter. And, you know, the Jaguars and Lawrence and those guys, they made plays. So, you know, tip your hat and, and say great job, and you, and you learn from it as a player. Because it is something that they aren't learning from within the, in losses, right? In these fourth quarter things. Do you put, and you mentioned the offense, do you put it more on the offense, uh, or the defense for blowing leads, or the offense not putting the games away? No, I think it's a, it's a complete team effort. Uh, you don't win and lose one side of the ball. Obviously, there there are moments in the game where one side picks you up. You know, you may be reeling as a defense. You give up a touchdown. You give up back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. So you need your offense to just, hey, let's just get a couple first downs. Let us regroup. Let us let us figure things out. Uh, I think just the only trouble mark has been the red zone uh, for the Ravens, especially this last game. You got to score touchdowns and. When you don't and you're kicking field goals, you lead, you let you give the chance for the other team to hang around. And then when they hang around, they do special things and you end up losing. Uh, there's I know you're not on Twitter, but this is uh, hot on Twitter right now. Uh, veteran, awesome player, still doing it at a really high level. Patrick Peterson, one of the best. Patrick Peterson came out and made some comments about Kyler Murray, saying that Kyler Murray only cares about Kyler Murray. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Kyler, the independent study clause in his contract, that in and out, that then the arguments on the sideline with his coach. Then he said this schematically, they were effed up last week, and now this. So you faced him in that playoff game where he looked a little um, soulless at times, I'll say. That's my opinion. Do you think he needs to change the way he's approaching the game and his teammates, given what you can't discredit what Patrick is saying? Yeah, I mean, first off, you know, all these guys get on these podcasts and uh, say things that, in hindsight, Pat Patrick Peterson is, is an all-time great. And I think looking back on it, like there's some things that should be said and some things that you just, mm -hmm. in my opinion, stays between yourselves as teammates. Like you are a teammate of Kyler Murray. Like you may not have liked him, but there is a respect factor that you guys went to battle together. And I don't know. I just like, I don't really necessarily agree with like airing out stuff, personal stuff that you don't know what's going on with the Cardinals right now. You're not on, even on their team. So for you to say some stuff like that, it's like it just creates controversy for really no reason. So I see both sides, whether it's true or not true. Yeah. It's just not not the way I do things. With, for, for Kyler, I see an unbelievable talent and a guy that, that brings so much to the table. There's just some type of dysfunction, right? Why has his play uh, kind of capped out? And for whatever reason, you just see a disconnect uh, whether it's schematically, whether it's uh, his teammates, whether it's him himself not playing at the level he should be playing at. I don't really know, and I'm not going to say one way or the other, but uh, he's a pro, and we all learn. Was I the same guy I was my first two, three years mm -hmm. than I was 8, 9, 10, and actual turning into the leader and, and accountable and all those things? Like, no, you you live and learn, and, and – uh, the quarterback position gets all the scrutiny and gets all the praise. That's just that's just part of the deal. Yeah. So uh, he is a different personality. You deal with different personalities on every team. It could be your quarterback. It could be your star defensive player that loves to practice, but as soon as practice is done, he's out of the building. Doesn't want to have anything to do with his teammates. And and you just 
you just figure it out. And that's the head and coach's job, really. Thank you. for. I'm glad you brought up the head coach because I was going to say, a, a quarterback that's a personality, developmentally, he's got the <clears> talent. <throat> what kind of coach is going to get the best out of him? That's the question I think a lot of Arizona Cardinal fans are watching. And I respect the hell out of you that you never went there. You never went there. And I know, and you know what? And I've heard some things around the league. I've never even, I don't bring up with you, but about things that, the ways that things have gone down between you and certain teams and stuff like that. And you always take the high road, Weddle. And I really do. I, I admire that. I appreciate that about you. Um, I mean, of course, I wish you'd drop bombs on my show. That's all. I mean, I can't tell you, Kay. I can't tell you how many times news outlets and companies like this are like, hey, we want you to come on and do this. I say, guys. Yeah. If you just want to talk ball, yeah. and I listen, I cherish my friendships and relationships in across the league and with yourself. Like it's just not me. It's not my personality. Like if you want that, I'm just not your guy. I and love that's that. okay. That's okay. I love that about you. And now I also love that you are not afraid to put on safety goggles. We've got a big one in the AFCs. Yeah, the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. What's a matchup you want to put focus on? So this matchup is Josh Allen quarterback for the for the Buffalo Bills obviously one of the best quarterbacks in the league has had some ups and downs the last few weeks could be injuries and whatnot I want to see him and how he's going to face this defense but especially going against Devin McCourty Devin McCourty has been one of the best safeties in the league for over a decade he does it all can cover can tackle can disguise can rush he's a playmaker I love his game mm -hmm. I've loved him from the minute he got in the game and he is a true leader, pro, uh, disguiser, manipulator of a defense for the opponent. And if he can if he can make Josh Allen mess up uh, in the sense of maybe force the ball into a coverage where he thought it wasn't or force some mistakes, that's going to be huge in a game like this in New England, cold, night game, division game. Uh, it's going to be a great matchup between those two. And, and on the flip side, Josh Allen, you, you just play your way. Do your job, correct yeah. reads, correct uh, decisions. You're too talented, too good to force the issue in a sense. Just get, take what the defense gives you. When the plays are there, go take them and be great. I asked you when we met like week one to make a list of your favorite safeties, and you put him on it, and then I made I you pick one of them <laughs> out of the 19 that you picked. That game on the line, Super Bowl on the line, who would mm -hmm. you pick? You said me. And I said, you can't pick yourself, Derek. And then you picked Devin McCourty. And I don't know if I you did. know this, but earlier this week, Devin was doing, you know, he was the captain on the team. He's talking to the press up there in New England. And, and Robert Kraft walks in and he interrupts his press conference to honor him because McCourty's playing his 200th yes. game as a Patriot tonight. So it's all the things you said, and this one's a little bit extra meaningful. So uh, I, I know Devin. I used to do a show with him up in New England. I'm a huge fan of him, probably more for what he is off the field than what he means in that locker room and on that no team. No doubt. But uh, let's send him a message before tonight's game. What would you like to say? And, and I'll say first, Devin, congratulations. Go kill it and stop Josh Allen. We love you. Yes. I. You know, funny story is I saw that clip, and I actually text Dev to congratulate him on what an honor and his success. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about this league. Like, you know, Dev and I go, you know, months without talking, but as soon as I shoot him a check, he texted me back within a few minutes. And and that's just the the type of guy he is in the in the the bond that we share is safety. So Dev, go get that 200th game and go get that win for your boys. Lead them like I like I know you are and uh, go be great, baby. Live it up. Live it up. All right, now we do what we do here. Important business to get to with the grit list. Let's take a look the grit at list. last week's. For those of you keeping track, here is what we have. Justin Fields, that tough yep. touchdown run. Tough, then, tough, physical, gritty. Yeah, these two teams face each other, the Bears and the Packers, this week. And Aaron yep. Rodgers threw a block, then he flexed. That was cool to see, but now he's got broken ribs. And Matt Ryan, yep. oh, Matt Ryan, running like a giraffe, <laughs> baby giraffe carrying a refrigerator out there. Uh, well, who we got okay, this week? Okay, so this week, Sam Darn. Arnold, you know, not a not an overly athletic, wow. explosive touchdown, but talk about the wherewithal, the the awareness, knowing the situation, knowing I haven't been touched yet. The ball is on the ground. I'm gonna just roll in and get a free touchdown. <laughs> and talk about <laughs> hey, Broncos, you guys have had an amazing years trying to keep this this team afloat. You gotta touch that guy. Touch the guy down. We got number two, Devontae Adams. I mean, he's been making spectacular catches all season. I've always loved watching him and competing against him, but the guy's got one arm, P.I., and still makes a catch. Derek Carr, 
throw the ball to Davante <laughs> every other pass, please. please. And we got number three coming in uh, for my top three. We got Robinson coming off the uh, swing pass and just trucks. I think it's Terrell the corner. Terrell, this isn't the college anymore, babe. This is uh, you got to bring your big boy <laughs> pass on the sideline. You got to take him a little lower. Listen, I've been trucked many times. I know exactly the feeling. Okay, you just got to take him a little lower on the sideline. So our new top three, I'm going Sam Darnold. What? Because of the awareness, the grit, the understanding of the situation. Listen, it's not always about the physical plays, the physical traits. Sometimes the mind I can't is the it. most important. A-Rod number two, and then the Devontae Adams one-handed catch that he does every week. We're the Amazing. show of record for Sam Dar. I picked him every week. I pick one performance that I loved, and I just like that he came and he won, and he had the touchdown, and he did more, all of that. You just made him, like, he's, <laughs> he's usually on a list, Sam Darnold, on teams, that the word that rhymes with grit. Seriously, a, a and you know, like, list. Can I say it? You know, it's just like you know, Sam Darnold. It's a typical like guys had a rough, rough career. Yeah. And to battle back, the guy is is nothing roll. but class. And he gets in there and gets a win for his team, man. He's got to All right. Tip, let's go. That's good luck, being great. Good luck to the Utes. We are supporting Utes. the Utes here on the Up and Adam Show. And I don't want to hear from any of you Trojans out there. We'll no. be back. We appreciate don't you, Weddle. Stay at home. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your, your couple of days. Without, what did he say? His rugrats? What did he say? Rugrats? Yeah, we love that for you. <laughs> okay, coming up. Uh, you up, anybody? Benny Snell is. That's right. Benny Snell and Sam Darnold. That's what we do here. You want sleepers? Okay, just because I love you. I'm going to send a text that says, hey, you up? Sup? How about Trevor Lawrence? He's been on a tear, putting up over 300 yards a game, five scores over the last two weeks, and he's got the Lions defense, me likey. Benny Snell at Atlanta. If Najee can't go, get Snell in your lineup. Uh, he had a score against Indy after Najee went out Monday night. Falcons, top 10 most generous. It's the holiday season. They love getting fantasy points to running backs. Garrett Wilson uh, clearly has got something going on, some sort of chemistry with Mike White coming off that two-touchdown game going against a Vikings defense that ranks dead last against the pass. Hell hath no fury than a receiver who's feeling himself, and they've got Minnesota. David Njoku at Houston. He's finally back to full strength since returning from an ankle injury. He scored last Sunday. I think he has a big day against his struggle. Texans defense. We've got more up in Adams up ahead. Big game tonight, Phil's Patriots. Gearing up for another huge week of college football. You can get it on the action and win part of a $20,000 prize pool. It's part of Twisted Tees College Football Picks Contest. Free to enter. You will make six picks and earn six points for each correct one. Sign up today at fanduel.com. Welcome back to the Up and Adam show. Hamilton is here. Have a time. I'm kidding. Yeah, don't need any more dancing today. But I think we've no, had enough. No, because we are going to get musical. <laughs> We're getting musical. Don't oh, worry. Oh, boy. Spotify wrapped, <laughs> dropped yesterday, and it's calling uh, everyone out. No one is safe. Marissa McBride, <laughs> a.k.a. Rissy Minaj, here are her most listened to songs, right? This is what it is. We love it. Little jungle, little Harry style. Fleetwood Mac and Rihanna. I mean, that's who, that, that's beautiful. Music, music is being made here. So what we decided to do is put the playoff picture spin onto this. We did the AFC yesterday, and let's do it. We'll see how that works out. Big AFC matchup tonight, but let's get in here and talk about the NFC. So, let's do it here. Uh, okay, let's do it. Mm, Hamilton, want to take it away? We've got lots of bookings here. The NFL purists, Ew. all right? They're excited. They got the classics. We got the Eagles, the Vikings, the San Francisco 49ers. Those are the NFL purists, right? That's where we're going next? All right, let's get to this. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's your headliners. The Philadelphia Eagles. You've got your Minnesota Vikings, your San Francisco 49ers. These are the guys on the big stage. Hamilton, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the Eagles right now are kind of running away with things. And then you got the uh, the Buccaneers sitting there uh, with a losing record, winning their division. We'll see if that continues. We'll see some powerhouses on the top row as we look at that lineup. And now let's go to teams. These are the teams that people, you know, drive to Indio for, right? These are the people people <laughs> sit in traffic. You're slapping on the sunscreen. You're wasting your money on, like, you know, sugar water for $70 a pop. Like, that is what it becomes out there. 104 degrees. These are the main stage headliners, your current NFC division leaders. You've got, uh, no, sorry, these are not these are not them. Okay, I think I'm all messed up in my things. These are your Cowboys, right? These are your New York Giants, your Washington Commanders. They get everybody going, but they haven't quite broken out yet. 
as said openers, Hamilton. Yeah, and it is interesting. All three of them, NFC East teams, all these Ooh. NFC East teams now are uh, are in the playoff picture. We'll see if that if that's able to continue as they kind of pick each other. I think they may pick each other off as the season goes. NFC East dominating wild card spots. All four would be in the playoffs if it started today. So there we go. And these then, were, what are we left with? The supporting acts, right? So this is like the indie band scene you know and love. But they've got to sell more merch to make it this year, right? The t-shirt tables are popping. We're trying to get it to happen. Have you heard of our band? Here's our mixtape. This is this. This is the <laughs> NFC teams on the playoff bubble. It's the Seahawks. Very trendy indie. Maybe it's grunge. We're bringing grunge back from the 90s. A little Pearl Jam action. Uh, or it's the Carolina Panthers. Hamilton. I like those Seahawks. They looked like they were a lock for the playoffs just a few weeks ago. How do they get back on track? Man, I, I identify with those teams out there peddling their mixtapes. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm with listen, them. Uh, but I hear it. <laughs> I think the path is still definitely there for Seattle, even though they've hit this little bit of a speed bump. If you look at the schedule, I think if they can take both games against the Rams, who are extremely banged up right now, they beat the Panthers, and then just take one of those three games against the Niners, Chiefs, and Jets, mm -hmm. that gets them to 10 wins, which I think is enough to take out either the Giants or Commanders, as those, as we talked about, those NFC East teams kind of beating each other up down the stretch of the season. But in order for it to happen, in order for them to get back on track, I think they really have to get Kenneth Walker going again. If you look at what's happened in their wins so far, okay. the four wins since he became the starter, he's averaging 106 yards per game, almost five yards a carry, six touchdowns. In the losses, look at those numbers. 21 yards, 1.8 yards per carry, just two touchdowns. They got to get him going again, and a lot of it's on that offensive line up front to do a better job. Now, this might be crazy, but they are, those Panthers. They're a game out of the division lead in the win column. We have just a couple seconds left. Can they catch Tampa? I know, it's, I know it does sound crazy, but uh, with the way their defense has been playing lately, it's the defense we expected to see from this team. I know you were big on them going into the season. Yes. They're finally starting to play like it. Maybe there's a chance. Maybe. We're buying tickets, baby. We're headed to <laughs> Rissi Minaj Fest. We'll be back, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.